Today on Nerd Out, transaction fees. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about transaction fees, what they are, how they work on the Cardano network. So let's jump into it. Transaction fees, they are there to help secure the network. Um, I know there are some blockchains out there that say, we have no fees. Well, they're they're then um, able to be denial of service attack. If fees, if fees were nothing, people could just spam tons of, of transactions through the network and the network would have to process them and they could just do this forever and just flood the network. So by making it even slightly painful, you prevent the network from being attacked. Um, so transaction fees, they also go into a rewards pot. In this rewards pot, um, any fees collected during the epoch, that increases the rewards for anybody that's staking on Cardano. So those are paid out through the stake pools. And so over time, the uh, the reserve in Cardano is going to is going to go downward. So right now, most of the stake pool rewards go or come from the reserve. Um, on Bitcoin, they have halvening events, you know, where it just drops down every every so many years. Um, on Cardano, it's a nice smooth curve that declines over time. The reserve goes down, and so we also have fees. So as the transaction volume increases over time. So as more people are using the network, as we get more use and utility, those fees will trickle up over time. Not the actual fee, but the overall volume of fees, and that should make up the difference. Uh, so if you're staking on the network, you should continue to get decent rewards as those um, fees become a larger part of the network as we gain use and utility. Um, the other important point on this is that the fees are not static. So they're based on protocol parameters. They can be voted on by the community and changed in the future. So as the price of uh, ADA rises, we can lower transaction fees if, if that makes sense to match. Um, there's also been some talk um, about changing this formula in the future so that it's based on some basket of currencies or, or based on you know some US dollar amount so that we, we don't always have to be changing these parameters, but I'm going to go over with you today what the parameters are today, and we will talk about the future maybe in the future. So how are fees calculated? The minimum fee for any transaction is based on how much space it takes up on the blockchain. And these transaction parameters, there's two of them that go into the calculation. There is the transaction fee fixed, and these values are in Lovelace, so one... This is millionths of an of an ADA. Um, so in ADA, this is 0.155381 ADA. And that's the fixed fee. The fixed fee is no matter what, um, this is the minimum amount that's, that's going to be paid. And then there's the transaction fee per byte. So this is per byte of the transaction. Um, that's how much the fee increases by. So you always pay the fixed fee and then you multiply the number of bytes in your transaction times this fee per byte to get the, the minimum fee. Now you are allowed to pay more than the minimum fee and that of course just goes back into the rewards pot and is distribu distributed out. But um, most wallets will use a uh, minimum fee so that you're not overpaying for your transactions. So let's take a look at a transaction here. This is a signed transaction in the Mary era. And if we look at the number of bytes here in the CBOR, the CBOR again is that compressed format that's going to go on the blockchain. And so this is the actual bytes that will be stored on the blockchain. And if we look at this, that is 756 bytes. We multiply that by our 44, add in our fixed fee, and we end up with 188645 Lovelace, or as you're used to seeing, around about this this amount of ADA, 0 0.18, 0 0.19 ADA, depending on you know certain things like how many UTXs are going in, how many UTXOs are going out, is there a certificate in, involved, 
Um, you know, all of those things can increase the size of a, a transaction. Are you dealing with enterprise addresses? Are you dealing with staking addresses? Those are a little bit longer, so again, more bytes. But yeah, so it's never gonna be an exact amount the same every time here because every transaction is different. But it will usually be around this level right now. Um, I also wanted to highlight a new wallet that's come out. It's called ccwallet.io, Cardano Community Wallet. It's another light wallet similar to Yoroi, so you don't have to spend a lot of time syncing the blockchain. And let's talk a little bit about how they are calculating transaction fees. So I just wanted to do a demo with their wallet, which is pretty cool. Um, it's Marcel Bomberg from Titan Staking and uh, Ola Alman from Allnet Staking Stake Pool that created this wallet. And so, when you're doing the transaction through here, sending, I'm sending 10 ADA on the test net, and you see here it is calculating the min fee as 0.16. This is a very cheap transaction. I believe it only had one UTXO in, one UTXO out. Uh, the one I demoed earlier had, um, I think it was minting some tokens along with some metadata and other stuff. So yeah, metadata also goes into that, that fee calculation. I forgot to mention that earlier. But with that, that's how it works. Nerd out.